Heading south of Copenhagen, my destination was the home of one of the famous products of Royal Scandinavia. In 1825, Countess Henrietta Danesgold Samso began this glass factory right behind me. Today it's famous all over the world and known as Home Guard. Here was an opportunity to see some of the world's best glass blowers at work. Okay, now Klaus is going to teach me how to make a penguin. Now, a beautiful penguin like this, as you can see, he's going to roll this lump of glass around in a bunch of broken black glass and broken white glass. And then they're going to blow it up and burn it up and do all this stuff to it to end up with one of these. Let's find out how he makes it. They make it look easy. I can do that. Okay, now it's my turn. Hmm, okay, okay, so I need a little more practice. I watch skilled craftsmen create stunning wine glasses with a flick of a wrist and a puff of air. Whoa, how beautiful, look at that. And then it was time to go shopping. I continued down from southern Zealand, crossing the Faroe Bridge to the island of Falster. The medieval center here is famous. It's a living museum where you can see the pastimes and pursuits of long ago reenacted before your very eyes. It was the perfect opportunity for me to don the robes of a nobleman. Sir Shedley, knight of the realm and rich beyond compare. Yes, I'd found my true vocation. First objective, protect my fortress. Time to warm up the catapult. Nobody, I mean nobody insults me this way. Fire when you're ready. One, two, three. That'll teach him to mess with me. Yep, kid! And let's see if I can make my enemies jump. <laughs> Henrik, tell me a little bit about the history of this place and this fantastic machine. Well, yes, I'd love to. This place here, as you can see with the village and, and the little town and the harbor and the military area here, it was all founded in, in 1989 when yeah. this town, Newcastle, right behind us, had its uh, 700 years anniversary. And they decided to make this small uh, trebuchet here, just for fun, just, you know, as a part of the, uh, of the celebration. And um, they, they did that, and, uh, and it was only supposed to be like three or four days where they should have this on. But after the first day, when there were still 5,000 people here watching it, we start thinking this might be a good idea, good entertainment and good uh, way of uh, teaching people of these war machines about the Middle Age. So, eventually the idea evolved and uh, we started to build a town, we, we, we bought this whole place. We, now we've just bought the forest you see over here behind us. And we're going to, to uh, change this into a medieval forest too. So. That's how it started. It's a good idea and it worked out well and then here we are with, with three big machines, a forest and uh, several acres of land uh, which is, all has medieval towns on it. That's awesome. My armies then displayed their skill at jousting and swordsmanship.
The armor weighs about 35 kilograms. The helmet alone is about 9 kilos. What a pain in the neck that would give you. Speaking of which, where are my worthless servants? It's time for dinner and a nobleman needs to be fed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. Ah. Uh-oh, time to go before I end up with egg on my face. Oh, too late. <laughs> Throughout this region, you'll find castles and old towns surrounded by forests. Castle gardens overflow with flowers. Oh, it's so refreshing. It's orangey. It smells so good. In the fields, there are modern windmills, silent and gentle, turning in the breeze. It was then time to board the ferry. Next stop, the island of Mon. The village Hesnes is a pleasant place to stop for lunch, but we were heading for the white chalk cliffs of Mont Clint. This is one of the most dramatic stretches of coastline in Denmark and reminded me of the white cliffs of Dover. Hello! Nope, it's not the white cliffs of Dover, it's the white cliffs of Mont Clint. Living here is idyllic, according to my guide Ole. Ole, you seem to be uh, very welcome here with these, uh, amongst these cows. Yeah, you know, these are my friends and uh, if they could speak, we could have a nice conversation with these guys. This place also inspired children's writer Hans Christian Andersen, who often stayed with the grandfather of the present Count Rosenkrantz. There often was uh, some guest home and there he lived in the part of this end of the house. While in Denmark, one should try Danish cuisine. I've been told that this place is really good. Come on, let's check it out together. Herring and salmon is still smoked here in the traditional way. Goes well with a local beer. Speaking of fish, when we return, we'll explore Denmark's links to the sea.